What's up friends, Brandon here. You're watching the Scale Racing Channel. Today we're gonna to be going over how to build a 60 gram modified downhill race car. Blue Line Racing is putting on an event where it's gonna be covering, I think, seven tracks now. And what we're doing is we're sending all of our cars up to Blue Line Racing where the initial run will be held. And then after that, we'll be sent to this track at Scale Racing Channel and then on to five other tracks. Uh, the last track is gonna be back at Blue Line. It's gonna be a cumulative point system and whoever does the best out of all the tracks will be the overall winner of the entire series. Now, not only are we gonna to have to build a fast car, but you're gonna to have to build one that's gonna last because seven different tracks, these cars are gonna take a beating and they're gonna to need to stand the test of time in order to make it all the way to the very end. Today, I'm gonna to show you my technique in building a 60 gram downhill race car. Tools of the trade, you gotta have a scale, got graphite, screwdriver, a couple picks, some side cutters, a drill, a Dremel with a buffing wheel, tap with a 256 tap. I use screws to hold my cars together, that way uh, I won't have any kind of breakage or anything like that instead of using glue. 3 16 inch drill bit. Uh, it's always handy to have an X-Acto knife around. Flitz polishing compound. We've got some lead weight. We've got 256 by 3 16 inch screws. JB weld. We've got the axle gluing jig. I've got some super glue gel there just in case. And sandpaper. Of course, you don't have to have all of this stuff to make a modified car. But it helps. And of course you need some cars in order to build with. I'm going to go with the 68 Mercury Cougar. I like to start out with the Hot Wheels Premium cars because they always have a metal base, metal body. They typically look really, really nice. They come pretty heavy from the factory so there's not a lot of weight that you're going to have to add in these cars. And this is kind of a proven chassis. The 68 Mercury Cougar is uh, pretty quick on the downhill racing scene. So this is going to be the car that I use to send off to do the racing. And I am going to farm the wheels from these other 1968 Cougars. Uh, I bought four of these. They were half off at Walmart. And I cracked all four of them. And I picked the cars which I feel have the best performing axles. So I'm going to have to take an axle from this guy and an axle from that guy. So I chose the cars that I felt had the best axle spin so that even if I do lose a little bit of graphite along the way, I still have a really good base to race with. And I'll show you really quick why I decided on uh, these two particular cars. We'll do some wheel spin. Back one's got some noise to it. Front one rolls pretty good. These are dry. These don't have any lubrication on them whatsoever. Using the front axle out of that car. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's the same deal here. Front wheel tends to roll a little bit better. So I'll be using the front axle out of that car too. The other two cars did not roll as well as these did. And here's why I like using the premium cars. Metal body, metal base, weighing in at 54.4 grams. It's not going to take a lot of weight to get this to the 60 gram target weight that we're all shooting for. Plastic base car weighing in at 33.7. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, this technique can also be used if you're just doing wheel swaps. And what I have here is a number 50 drill bit, and that is the tap drill size for the 256 screws that I'm gonna be using to hold the body together. And typically what I'll do is I will use this number 50 drill bit to do some pilot holes in the rivets. And you only have to go maybe a millimeter or two deep. You don't really have to go very deep, but you drill the pilot hole with the number 50 and then you follow it up wiping the rivet out with that 3 16 drill bit. And I found that when you drill the pilot hole, uh, especially on these plastic based cars, the drill bit has less of a tendency to walk and screw up. So we're gonna go ahead and drill the pilot holes in all these cars. Okay, that's with a pilot hole drilled and that's with the standard rivet. Okay, I've got my pilot holes drilled now we're gonna take the 3 16 drill bit and install it in our drill. Center up your drill bit.
and I drill until there's no more rivet head left holding that on the base. Even with the pilot hole in these plastic cars, they have a tendency to walk. I don't plan on reusing these, so I really don't care. And that's what the rivet's drilled. You can use a soldering iron tip to melt the bottom of the plastic chassis cars off, but I've already got the drill bit out, so I'm just gonna use that method. And from here, should be able to pop this off fairly easily. Be careful not to bend any axles in the process. And that front axle is the one that we want. Now, in order to get this axle out, you're gonna either need to use your snips and snip those tabs off, or you can use a screwdriver and prime away. Either way works pretty well on the plastic cars. And there's that one. I am gonna go ahead and remove the rear axle on this too because uh, I do wanna keep the axles and the tires for a future use. So I'll just go ahead and pop those guys out. Don't confuse these. We're gonna put this one over here to make sure that that one's the one that we use for our build. Once you get your axles removed, we'll go ahead and take a look inside that hub right there and make sure that there's no mold flashing or anything like that in there. If there is, stick your handy dandy X-Acto knife down in that edge and rotate it around and get that out of there. These don't have any kind of mold flashing. Also, it's a good idea to take a look at the inside, right there where that wheel comes in contact with your chassis. Make sure there's no flashing there either because that does make a difference too if there's flashing or if it's smooth. All right, the rivets are drilled out of the metal base car. This can be a little bit hard to gauge as far as when to stop, but um, usually you can see, if you look really, really close here, you can see a ring where the, uh, the post and the body differ. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but as long as you get that main body of the rivet ground away, don't go too deep here because some of these bases really aren't that thick but just make sure you get all that rivet head away before you start prying this off of here. Sometimes these can be a little bit of a bear to get off, but if you get the rivet head completely taken off, it shouldn't be too horribly bad. Let's see if I have any luck. Oh yeah, look at that, popped right off. I usually don't get that lucky. I save my interior pieces and I usually do my builds with full interiors. Just get a little bit creative on where the weight placement's gonna be. This chassis right here is completely flat, so that's gonna allow me some freedom with my weight placement. Now, if you look here, you've got the same little didgeridoos that hold your axles on that you do in the plastic molds. Uh, this guy is just barely hanging on, and so is this one. You can use the same method with the screwdriver and get in there and pry those tabs, and that's probably what I'll do. Uh, if not, you could always use your snips to snip off these posts. In fact, I might just go ahead and give that a try. Nope, not gonna happen. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and use the screwdriver method to pry these out of place. There's one. And this can be more difficult if you've got a car that they've actually mashed these tabs down harder with. These came out pretty easy though. Sometimes you might have to take a Dremel and grind these tabs a little bit in order to get these axles out, but these came out pretty easy. And I will be saving these for some kind of a custom build in the future. Another thing you wanna make sure of is make sure that when you get these out that that slot right there that that axle falls into isn't fouled by any little metal boogers or anything like that. You can take a screwdriver and just drag it through that slot. You can widen these gaps up a little bit more, but just slide it through there. Make sure 
There's nothing in the way there because we're using this chassis to help us center the axles when we put this thing back together. Chassis prep, basically what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take my Dremel and the flits and I'm gonna apply some of the polish onto the wheel and I'm gonna polish all these points right here. This is where your wheel is actually gonna come in contact with the chassis. We wanna reduce friction as much as possible and we are going to go ahead and polish these guys and make them nice and smooth. Take a little bit of the flits, it doesn't require a lot and just kind of mush it around on that wheel. If you put a big gob of it on here, it's gonna fling off as soon as you turn that Dremel on. So use this sparingly. And that's that. Hopefully you can see a difference there on camera between the polished side and the non-polished side. You got a good gloss on there, you know you've got a good polished finish. And that's where your inside wheel is going to come in contact with the chassis. Now go ahead and do the same process on the other three. All right, we've got both sides of the chassis polished. Now we get to move on to the axles. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and polish one of these axles and you'll be able to see what it looked like before and after. But typically what I do is I will move my axle all the way out where I have good access to it down here, push it back a little bit, and then I'll hold that, push against that with my finger and hold pressure on it. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to polish this and it's not gonna allow that axle to spin. So again, with the flits, not very much, turn it on away from you and slowly go around it with your buffing wheel. Don't put a lot of pressure on your axle because it has a tendency to grab on these polishing wheels. And this is a little bit more difficult whenever I'm doing it in front of the camera. But what you're gonna do is just go around and around, nice and light touch, until you get a high gloss. And if you need to stop and apply a little bit more polishing compound, that's fine. Keep going until you feel you've got enough shine on that thing. And the faster than ever axles will polish up really quick. You don't want to take very long on that, but these are just your regular standard steel axles. So it might take quite a few passes to get everything polished like you want it. Again, make sure that you don't push too hard on that buffing wheel because you don't want it to grab that axle and bend it. You want to keep these axles straight. Now you can spend a little bit of time on that nail head too. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's just another contact point where the wheel is gonna hit that axle. Now when you get done, I've got a little microfiber cloth right here. I make sure I go ahead and wipe off every little bit of this polish. You don't want the, the tire to get down into the polish because then it will embed into the plastic and it will foul up the roll. And here's the before and after. Hopefully you can see that. The polished axle on the bottom, the non-polished axle on the top. Okay, this axle is complete. This is an unpolished axle. I just wanna see what the wheel spin looks like between the two, if I can. Polished axle non-polished axle. Okay, at this point you should have both of the axles that you're using on each side completely polished and you should have your chassis polished. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set this chassis and the axles in the jig and go ahead and get them glued down. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you give everything a really good cleaning. That way the epoxy has a good place to bond to. This is the jig that I'm going to be using to set the axles. Uh, Red Pill Racing did a video on this uh, probably about six months ago. And uh, I made my own and this thing is very, very handy. I will give a link in the description down below to the video where he shows you how to make this. It's really not hard, but it works really well. 
you're gonna use these rubber bands. These are the things you get from Walmart. It's a bag for like a dollar or something like that. The yellow ones is the one that Red Pill recommends using. Those are the ones that I've been using this entire time. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna set your car chassis on top of the jig like that. And you might have to put some pressure to hold it down. And then you're gonna take your rubber band. Again, I did not invent this process. Red Pill is the one who uh, showed me how to do this. And I uh, thank you very much because this thing works really, really good. This is the way. Um, go ahead and just get those hung right now. And then you're gonna come back to this other side and do the same thing. I've got a little bit of an angle right here on this. That way it keeps that axle pushed up against the outside slot in the chassis. And that's what I'm gonna use to make sure that these axles stay in place and are really straight. Come around here. Okay, once you get to that point, then you can kind of start fine tuning a little bit. You can push on these, and if one side has a little bit more tension than the other, then you know, just kind of tweak your rubber bands a little bit and get the tension about the same. What you can also do is you can pull that rubber band down just a little bit and get it to seat. And that'll give you your spacing on either side of your wheel before you glue these axles down. Again, I did not invent this process, but if it works, you might as well use it. Got my tension about the same. I'm gonna give this a little tug. Give that one a little tug. And that should have your axles placed in the slots. Just make sure that they're pressed all the way up against the outside slots on both of these. And make sure they're nice and seated down in the chassis. Make sure your spacing looks good between your axle and your chassis. And then you'd be able to apply glue after everything looks good. I'm gonna use this JB Weld Quick Weld. It has a set time of six minutes, so when you mix this up, it's a 50-50 mixture, and it doesn't take a lot of this stuff, but once you start mixing it together, you got six minutes to get it where you want it to be. So don't dilly-dally. All right, I'm actually gonna use this screwdriver right here. Clean screwdriver, you can use that if you want, or a toothbrush. Just mix this together. The faster you apply this, the easier it's gonna to be to work with. Just take a little dab off there and you're gonna drop it right there on top of your axles. Don't overdo this and make absolutely sure you do not put any of this on the outside axles. Now you can kind of spread this around with the tip a little bit, just to make sure it gets down in there where it's supposed to be. I'll typically put it, if you see that little square right there, I'll put it to edge to edge on that little square. And grab just a little bit more for the front. Get it pushed down in that slot. And if you've got a little bit of a mound here, you can actually kind of push that down just a little bit. Wipe off your screwdriver with the rag. You can actually kind of lift up on these axles a little bit. To make sure you're getting that epoxy down where it needs to be. And maybe come back again with your screwdriver. Just make sure it's pushed down in that slot. This is gonna be the lifeblood of your axles. The better you glue this, the more wrecking and racing it will be able to withstand. Now we're gonna let that sit. Uh, some guys use super glue to hold those axles in place with. If you do use super glue, make sure you use the gel control type. 
If you use a thin super glue, it's gonna travel down that axle and it's gonna get between your axle and your wheel and it's gonna foul the spin on them. Uh, another quick note, a lot of racers like to use sandpaper and sand these axles smooth. And that's perfectly acceptable. I'm just showing you the way that I do it. I typically don't. I haven't gotten to that point yet where I wanted to start sanding those. Um, but yeah, you can use, you know, like a 1500 or 2000 grit sandpaper and polish every little imperfection out of that before you start using the metal polish. I don't, it's just a matter of preference. While our chassis is curing, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the body prep. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and knock all the plastic parts out of that guy. And we're gonna drill these holes a little bit deeper. Again, I screw all of my cars together, but you're gonna to have to go a little bit deeper on these posts in order to give you enough room to tap them out to the proper length for your 3 16 screws. And this is a general, I think it says 168, number 168, I think that's what it says. Uh, it's just a small tap handle that will make your life a lot easier. I've had this for many years. You buy good one time, you don't have to buy it again. So you've got the number 50 drill bit chucked back up in your drill. You're gonna go ahead and you wanna make this as square as you possibly can get. You don't wanna drill at an angle or anything like that, but leave it as square as you possibly can. That way you don't break through on the post with your drill. What I typically do is I'll put my drill bit all the way to the base of that body and I'll put a mark on the drill. That way I know what my depth gauge is gonna be. That way it ensures that I don't go through the top of the body and you surely don't wanna send that little drill bit through a finger. Cause let me tell you, it doesn't feel good. When I get to the depth that I'm comfortable with, I've got the drill buried in the body. I'll put my fingernail right here and I'll check the depth on the drill. And that's gonna be plenty for the screws that I'm using on this car. Make sure you take small bites out of this. You don't wanna sit here and drill in this hole forever. Drill a little bit, pull it out, clear your bit. If you foul that bit, it's just gonna make a lot of heat. It's gonna bore out the hole bigger than it needs to be. Clear your bit and do not do not push too hard on that drill bit. It's small, they're easy to break. If you break one of these off in there, you're done. You're gonna to have to glue that body to the chassis. And that's as far as I wanna go. Plenty of depth to tap those holes out with. Okay, I'm using a 256 plug tap. There's three different kinds, starting, plug, and bottoming tap. I'm using the plug tap. The starting tap has uh, a longer distance of eased threads and you just don't have enough depth on these posts. So I'm using the plug style tap and I actually ground the point off just a little bit to give me a little bit more reach into the bottom of that hole. Always make sure you use some kind of uh, oil or something on this tap that way it does not gall inside of the hole on the body. Tapping out these holes, you just really gotta take your time. Make sure that your tap is square with your body. Light pressure, you don't wanna over torque these guys. It's really, really easy to break these taps. If you've got oil on there and you've got that proper size hole drilled, it really shouldn't be all that difficult. You're gonna take about a half a turn and back it off. Half a turn and back it off and you keep going until you basically bottom it out inside of that hole. As long as you do this method right here, you shouldn't have any trouble breaking off a tap inside that body. When you get done, Make sure you clear all the shavings out of your tap. And then repeat the process on the front body post. Again, you wanna keep this as perpendicular to the body as you possibly can. All right, the posts 
are drilled and tapped. Now we're gonna wait on our JB Weld to set. All right, while we're waiting on this to cure, quick word on axle and wheel choice. This was pretty easy for me because the casting I was using was the same between the two. So I didn't have to worry about the width of where those axles come out to. If you are going to steal the axles off of a different car, you gotta make sure this width right here is the same between this car and the car that you plan on modifying. If not, and they're too wide, you're gonna get a lot of wheel slop in there, or if it's too narrow, it's just not gonna fit inside there. So make sure when you get your donor car that it's the same width between the axles as the car you plan on modifying. And I'm not tubing these axles, that's a whole other story altogether. This is just using the stock Hot Wheels axles in a newer chassis. Okay, we've moved inside, and the main reason why I did that is because I want to use this granite countertop as a nice flat surface in order to do my sanding. The Cougar is still curing. I don't want to uh, speed the process along on that one. I, I want it to get completely hardened before I go through this step right here, but we're going to use this Lamborghini Urus as my demonstration piece for how I sand wheels. And what I use is a four, a six, an eight, a 1000, and a 1500 grit sandpaper in order to get this where I want it to be. And then I finish it off with this fine crocus cloth. I think it's probably somewhere around 2000 grit. Uh, if you feel it, it feels just like paper. It doesn't feel like it's got any grit to it, but it puts a nice polish on my wheels. This is clean. I just cleaned it off. I don't know if you can hear this. Can you hear that? I don't know. It's basically a brand new Lamborghini Urus. Nothing's been done to it. What I'll do is I'll start with my 400 grit paper. And then what I'll do is I put the car at about a 30 degree angle to the paper. And this is where your significant other is really going to enjoy the noise. But I'm pushing forward and I'm trying to put even contact on all four wheels when I push forward. And I don't know if you can notice this or not, but those wheels are turning as I'm pushing it forward. I don't wanna do it this way and put flat spots on the wheels because that's what'll happen. So you aim it a little bit forward, maybe at a 30 degree angle to the sandpaper and go ahead and pass over it a few times. You're gonna stop and you want, to see, you want to see that you've got a concentric band going all the way around that wheel. And if you've got a concentric band, it doesn't have to go all the way across. See how there's still a little bit of a shininess in there? It doesn't have to go all the way across. Just make sure you've got a concentric band where that sandpaper has touched the wheel. This one's gotten a little bit more, and it looks like this guy has got a little bit of a mold thing going on, but it does have a concentric ring. So that's really as far as you need to go. You don't have to get the whole wheel sanded. If it bothers you, you can put a little bit more pressure on this side of the car and do the same process. But if you're not removing a whole lot more plastic off of that wheel, then there's really no sense in going any further. Once you get that ring all the way around, you're gonna move to your 600 grit and you're basically gonna do the same thing. And as you progress further with this sandpaper, it doesn't take a lot of passes to do what you need to do. And a lot of times, I'll go ahead and I'll flip the car around the other way and do the same thing. And you can actually feel it. At first, it, it grabs a little bit, and the more you pass over this paper, it smooths out, especially with the finer grit paper. When it starts smoothing out, you know you're done. You move on to the next grit. 800 grit is next, same process. And this is where your significant other is really gonna enjoy this process because it makes kind of a nasty little noise. Light pressure, you don't have to really push down hard on it. All you're doing here is just removing the scratches from the previous grit sandpaper. And that's my son in the background. Yep, that's him. Move on to 1000, same process. Doesn't take long. If it makes that buzzing noise, just ease up on your pressure just a little bit. Again, you've got the concentric patch going around each one of these wheels. 
That's all you need. 1500 grit. And you can wipe these off as you go. Doesn't really matter. Same process, 1500 grit. It starts feeling different. And it should, it should start feeling a lot smoother. And you don't need to spend a lot of time doing this. Some people do figure eights, some people do circle. I don't like doing circles because I don't want it to come across that paper and make a flat spot when you go like this. Flat spots are your enemy. As long as you keep going like that, you're not gonna get any flat spots. Now we're going on to the crocus cloth. I wanna show you what it looks like right now. It'll start looking smoother and smoother. And we're gonna do the crocus cloth. And this is just like a really fine polishing cloth. I'll go back and forth and I'll turn it around, do it again. This removes almost no plastic. This is just giving you a polish. Just a little though, don't overdo, don't overdo. It gets working and it feels good and next thing you know, you've overdone it. Show you what it looks like after I'm done. Should be pretty shiny. And that's what it looks like after the crocus cloth. At this point, I might pass it a few more times over that cloth but I'm gonna call this done. And let's see if we can hear a difference. Rolls a lot smoother. It rolls longer. Hard leaning noise, you can push down on it. If you can hear this, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's almost silent. You'll really notice it when you put it on the track. That's what I do for sanding wheels. Again, this isn't the only way to do it. You can do it however you like. If you've got a different process that works really well, hey, leave a comment down below, let me know about it. But this is the way I do it. Seems to work pretty well. Uh, one thing that you need to do when you get done doing it this way, since the wheels are mounted on the car when you do the sanding, make sure you get some compressed air or like one of those little keyboard air blower things and just blow out any kind of dust that might be remaining inside or around the wheel from where you did the sanding. Again, we didn't take off a lot of material starting at 400 grit, um, but there is still a little bit of remaining sanding dust. That's how I do it. Give it a try. You'll notice the difference. All right, I'm gonna try my best to get a sound demonstration between the Lamborghini that I just did and a number car with Trap 5 wheels. See if you can hear any difference. All right, this is a Jaguar with Trap 5 wheels. They're a little bit smaller in diameter, but you should be able to hear a difference. And just for giggles, Jaguar in lane number four, Lambo in lane number five. Mark, set, go! The JB Weld is starting to get hard, but I still don't want to push it just yet. You can insert your interior on that car, and you can start looking at places where you can add weight. We only need to add five grams, so it shouldn't be that difficult to do on this car. If you start with a lighter car, you need to start getting creative with your weight placement. But it looks to me like um, right underneath these roll bars right here, on the chassis, we could add some weight. The floorboards, we could add some weight. There's some room in there. And we could even actually add just a little bit in the rear here, underneath that plastic spoiler. So that's what we're gonna be doing is looking at where we can put our weight. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this off the jig here in just a second and find out exactly how much weight I do need to add. Okay, car is removed off of the jig. What we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that we've got about the same amount of wheel play on each side, which the front looks good and the back looks good. Again, that rubber band trick is the way to go 
for making sure that you get all of your clearances good on this guy. Glue is still, um, it's hard, but it's not quite there yet. But what we're gonna do is move our scale over here. We've got it zeroed out. We're gonna put the car on there and all of the interior pieces, screws, body. We're sitting at 54.2 grams. I'm gonna go to my weight. These are just fishing weights. And I'm gonna start adding some fishing weights on here to find out what it's gonna take to get me really close to or at 60 grams. Sorry about that. 57.9. I will step up to a slightly bigger weight. 62.4. We'll take these little guys out of here. Okay, 58.7. That's 60 grams right there. So these two little sinkers and those two little sinkers need to find a home in this car somewhere. Actually, I might go a little bit smaller on the larger sinkers just to make sure that uh, in case this scale weighs a little bit on the light side, I don't want to be overweight at a different track. So right there, those two and these two need to be installed on this car somewhere and I should be nice and safe with my weights. Now what I'm gonna do, got some needle nose. I'm just gonna squish these guys down a little bit. Give them a little bit of a flat surface to work with. And I'll square the sides up a little bit. And it really depends on where you plan on putting this weight as to what shape you need to squeeze this into. Just make sure that when you start squeezing, you don't get your fingers pinched in there in case this thing slips. Okay, this is what I've come up with. I took one of those split shots, the bigger one, and just kind of squoze it down with my needle nose. And it is actually gonna fit right here in the interior, like so. Put a little JB Weld on that, let it set up, and that'll be good to go. When it sits down onto the chassis, it will be practically sitting on the bottom of the chassis itself. Also, I've got another split shot, another one of the big split shots formed to where it fits down inside of this gap right here. And it will sit down nice and flush. Again, holding that weight in with a little bit of JB Weld. And then these last two pieces, I'm gonna put one in each corner and I just kind of flatten them down just a little bit. But I'll put one of these in a corner, one of these in a corner, and with all that weight added, Everything will fit nice and flush. I'll be able to maintain this stock interior and I'll be able to make weight. And if you've noticed, I've kept a lot of my weight. This is actually a pretty thick chassis, but I've kept a lot of my weight towards the back. And I think that weight displacement being towards the back is gonna help the most in this particular chassis. So we'll get some more JB Weld mixed up and get these weights anchored in. Two little dabs of JB Weld in the back. Drop that guy in place. A little bit of JB Weld in that gap. And then slide this weight in. Let her set. I'll probably go back in there and put just a little bit more Just like so. A little bit of JB Weld in that gap right there. A 
slide him in place. A little bit more right on top of that weight just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And while the weight's setting up, let's go ahead and do one final weigh-in and make sure we're good to go. 59.6 grams works for me. Okay, JB Weld hasn't quite set up yet. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on top of the chassis. That way in case, if anything needs to move, it still is a little bit conformable. It looks to me like everything's sitting nice and flush with the interior and the chassis. Now we'll go ahead and install the body. Last step to the rebuild, installing the screws. All right, and in case you're wondering, this is from my RC days. MIP is the manufacturer of these uh, hex drivers. Very, very good drivers. Extremely hardened tips. This is a 50 thousandths. Good for those 256 button head screws. Now that the car is pretty much done, I'm gonna let it sit for probably another hour to make sure that the JB Weld on the axles has fully cured. And I'm gonna sand the tires just like I sanded that Lamborghini Urus. Two hours later. Okay, the JB Weld has had time to set and I went ahead and sanded the wheels just like the way I demonstrated with the Lamborghini Urus. And I went ahead and graphited the wheels just like I demonstrated in the uh, how to get speed out of your Hot Wheels video that I uploaded uh, maybe a month or so ago. So this car pretty much ready to go. Wheel spins okay. The rear axle not as good as I would hoped for. Eh, not my best, but it's done. One other thing I wanted to check I don't know if you guys remember this car or not, this uh, Corvette Stingray. It's also a 60 gram car and it performed really well for me. Um, I wanna check the weight bias. And typically if you go look at all the Pinewood Derby uh, hacks and tips, they want like a 70-30 rear to front weight bias. It's gonna be a little hard to do on Hot Wheels just because uh, there's not as much room and there's not as much adjustability. That one, 36 and a half on the rear, there we go. The front reading 24.6. Let's see how this one did. 25.5 in the front. 34.5. So it does have some bias to the rear, which is good. Uh, the Corvette maybe just a little bit more than the Cougar, but it's pretty close. It's within a gram or two. Um, we'll just have to see how it does. And again, if you want to see this car go down the track and see how it performs, make sure you go over to Blue Line Racing, subscribe to that channel, and make sure you click the notifications bell. That way you know when the 60 gram race is gonna happen. All right, if you're still here with me, I'm glad you stuck around. I got to get this thing packaged up, sent up to see the Northeast Beast. Again, this is just a guide on how to make a 60 gram car. It's certainly not the rule. Uh, there's lots of different methods out there. This is just the one that I like to use personally. If there's any tips or tricks that you can add, please feel free to leave a comment down below and uh, let us know anything that I might have missed. So until next time, y'all stay healthy, have fun racing.